Hello and welcome to another edition of the Stogie Review Video Review. I am Walt White and uh, back once again for another cigar review. Uh, I had a, a little bit of an issue this morning. Uh, a cigar that I was planning on smoking uh, earlier on, uh, actually what I was planning on smoking later on in the day wound up being something that I was supposed to smoke this morning. Uh, it's about 8 a.m. and uh, the, the cigar of the evening is uh, was a fairly powerful smoke, so I had to sideline it, and I just started rooting through my cooler, and uh, I came to the realization that I'm running out of mild cigars to do uh, video reviews on. Uh, I, I really don't have anything left. I've got uh, a couple of uh, Nub Connecticut's. I think I might have one uh, Oliva Connecticut left. Maybe an Edge Light somewhere lying around the cooler, but uh, other than that, really nothing fairly mild. At least nothing mild enough to to, to do on camera. So, uh, so I'm digging around, and I come to the realization that I don't have anything for a full blown review. It's just, just I don't have anything that I haven't done already, and I don't have anything that I've smoked enough of to feel comfortable with a review. So I was kind of forced into a situation where I had to do a short ashes for you this morning. And uh, I just grabbed the first cigar I saw that I don't that, that I didn't think would blow my head off, and that is the 601 Maduro, which is a blue label. Um, this is a Robusto. It's a five and a quarter by 52. Actually, I bumped into my Miami cigar rep uh, at my local tobacconist the other day, and uh, he was kind enough to give me a sample, as well as uh, another sample, which I'd like to do a review on. Only I've got one cigar, so it's. It might be one of those things where I just do the review based on one cigar and then I do my best to get a second sample to follow up. But uh, this is a 601 Blue. It is a Maduro. Uh, the, the first review on the site was done back in 2007 and uh, it was a follow up to an episode of Dog Watch Cigar Radio that Brian Jerry and I did. and. Uh, there's a full review with video as well as a link back to uh, the original episode we did, I think. But, uh, so I'll be revisiting the 601. Uh, first things first, uh, first thing that grabs my attention is, uh, I got a problem. Actually, it looks like the leaf lifted in one spot and then peeled back a little bit. Um, it doesn't look like the cigar's gonna fall apart. It's, it's pretty ugly. I think I'll burn right through it though. Uh, another issue is it looks like I've got a little bit of a just a sunspot or a burn or something in the see maybe you can see it there right about there. It's a small hole in the portion in the top wrap of the leaf uh, down below. You can see the the color of the the leaf is a little bit lighter and. Uh, it's not a hole clear through. I, I, I'm not getting much of an aroma off of it. These are uh, these are box press cigars. It's the only 601 that is box pressed, and it's made by uh, Don Pepin Garcia, exclusively for 601. Comes in four sizes: a robusto, toro, a prominente, which is a 56 by five and a half, and a torpedo. Torpedo is 52 by six and an eighth. All packaging is boxes of 20. Uh, wrapper is Nicaraguan Habano Maduro. Filler is Nicaraguan. Binder is Nicaragua. And uh, it's listed as a medium to full with lots of flavor. So we'll see just, uh, just how full it is first thing in the morning. Not first thing in the morning, but first cigar of the morning. Now, I am drinking a little bit of coffee this morning, so see if that has any effect on the cigar whatsoever. As I'm, I'm sure it probably will, but I've had uh, a couple of fistfuls of these cigars over, over the last couple of years. So I'm pretty comfortable with the flavor profile and everything that I'm going to get out of it.
Uh, draw's a little firm. Um, smoke volume's a little light because of the firm draw. Um, it tastes fairly full right off the bat. But uh, I got my cigar lit. It's smoking, so uh, I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be back. Uh, jump on the first third and uh, see how the cigar turns out. Well, welcome back. I'm uh, plugging right along on my 601 Maduro, or uh, Blue Label, as uh, a lot of people like to call it. And uh, so far, so good. Uh, as you can, well, maybe as you can see, I've pretty much burned through that that lifting portion of leaf. Um, I've got a little bit of a flowering effect because of it. But all in all, it, it looks to be burning pretty well. Uh, burn line is thin. Uh, it, it's a little wavy just around that part of lifting leaf. There's also a little bit of blistering around that portion of lifting leaf. But everywhere, I'll look, uh, uh, everywhere else it looks pretty good. Uh, the ash color is light. Uh, it seems pretty strong. I mean, it's, it's probably about an inch now. And, it, you know, it takes a firm tap to knock it off and into the ashtray. Um, at the end of the first clip, I was kind of staring at the head a little bit. And uh, the reason I was doing that was because I, I saw that it was lifting a little bit. Just like the section of leaf at the foot, I, I was getting the same lifting effect on, on like the middle of the, the triple cap lineup. And uh, I thought maybe it was going to lift right off, but it hasn't. It, it really hasn't been a problem as of yet. Um, it, my initial impression of the cigar, first couple of puffs, the first thought that goes through my mind is, I might have uh, been better suited smoking something else first thing in the morning or, or as a first cigar of the day. Um, I, I smoked a, a little bit further and the, that initial rush of, of nicotine or body or whatever the, the case may be, whatever was hitting me in the, in, my, in the pit of my stomach just seemed to subside. Uh, initially there's, there's a lot of spice and it's kind of overwhelming. At least, you know, it, at 8 a.m., the first couple of puffs of the cigar with the spiciness was a little bit overwhelming for me. Uh, it's settled down since then and it's it's quite enjoyable. It's still a little bit more full than I would like early on in the morning, but really I don't have a lot of complaints about it, about the way it's smoking at this point in the day, being my first cigar. Uh, body is, uh, I don't know, in between medium to medium and medium to full. Um, not quite medium to full, but not quite medium. It's sort of in there somewhere. I'm taking that, that split designation and splitting it again. And uh, the flavor profile, there's some spiciness to it, which is enjoyable. There's some bitter chocolate. And uh, I'm getting sort of a residual coffee flavor. I don't know whether it's coming from the cigar or if it's actually coming from my coffee. So uh, we'll just have to just ignore that for the time being. The finish is pretty smooth. It leaves... Uh, like a, a thick creamy texture on the walls of the mouth on the palate makes me salivate a little bit. The draw is a little snug still. This volume of smoke is not bad. The resting smoke is fairly light. Uh, the room aroma is fairly heavy. I mean, uh, it, it's one of the, the few cigars that I lit up and, and sat in the smoke a little bit and then, you know, could actually smell it. It, it stood out. I didn't kind of just fade into the background. So the, there's a little bit of stink to it. But, uh, it's really not not bad. It's not offensive, you know, to my eyes, to my nose, my throat, or anything like that. Uh, it's smoking pretty well. I'm enjoying it. So uh, that's the first third of my 601 Blue Label. So uh, sit tight. I'll be back. We'll take a look at the second third, and uh, you know, we'll see how it see how I react to uh, such a cigar as a first cigar of the day. All right. Well, I'm back. It's uh, Actually, it's been nearly an hour and a half since I first lit up this cigar. And uh, I'm still going strong, about halfway through now, uh, working through the second third. Uh, now that I've burned past that part of leaf that was lifting up that I showed you earlier, uh, I'm still getting some blistering on the backside, backside being the, you know, the, the joint in the band where it overlaps, as opposed to the front side where you would look at the band. Um, Aside from that, the burn line's a little wavy. It's fairly thin. Uh, the ash is, is pretty strong. It's firm, compacted, light in color. 
Uh, burn rate seems pretty slow. Uh, it's probably attributed to the draw being a little firm, but uh, <clears throat> it, it feels like the smoke density is picking up a little bit. I'm not working as hard to get a mouthful of smoke. Uh, body's medium to full. Finishes fairly short. It's uh, it's creamy on the palate, and uh, flavor combination is more or less the same as it was earlier. I'm still getting some spice and a little more spice of the sinuses than earlier, and I'm getting uh, just a, a rich uh, sort of a bitter chocolate flavor, and there's uh, it, it just tastes like uh, Nicaraguan tobacco as well. I mean, it's it's just uh, it's a nice play on flavors. Um, the bitter chocolate and the Nicaraguan flavor go very well together. I like, you know, I like the flavors I'm getting off of the Maduro wrapper with uh, the Nicaraguan core. It's just, uh, it's been pretty enjoyable so far. Uh, room aroma is more or less the same. I can still notice it, even though I'm, I'm sort of marinating in my own smoke. I can still pick up the aroma off the cigar. There's nothing that's really jumping out at me. It's still it's it just sort of smells like a cigar there's nothing really distinct jumping out and uh you know i, I really don't know what else to say i'm still i'm still getting a little bit of, the, of a coffee nuance but i can't attribute it to the cigar since i'm, I'm actually drinking coffee and uh coffee just pretty much it, i'm uh i don't know whether it matters but uh when i drink coffee i don't add that cream and i don't add sugar it's just straight up coffee and um, that's sort of what I'm getting. So again, I don't know whether it's the coffee or if it's actually the cigar, but all in all, I'm enjoying the flavor combination. Again, it's still a little much for a first cigar of the day, but I really don't mind it. You know, I don't feel sick or ill or or, or dizzy or you know any of the the, the typical nicotine symptoms. It's uh, you know it, it's not over the top, but it, it definitely is outside of my comfort zone. Um, that about does it for the second third. Just on a side note, I'm actually listening to uh, Metallica's Death Magnetic album. Just for whatever reason, just figured I'd throw that in there. Uh, and you know what? When I first listened to it, I really didn't care for it. But now that I'm listening to it a couple of more times, I'm, I'm finding it. I'm, I'm liking it more the more I listen to it. Uh, unlike the cigar, I, I, I like the first one I had. And, you know, I, I enjoy them throughout. There's no really sort of warming up to it. But uh, for whatever reason, I'm taking a liking to the newer album, and uh, I'm enjoying the cigar. So I'm going to get back to uh, editing links on Stogie Review, uh, have a little bit more coffee, smoke a little bit more of my 601 Maduro. I'll be back, and uh, we'll wrap up the final third of the cigar, and I'll let you be on your way. Well, welcome back. It's about time to wrap up my... Uh, my 601 Maduro, and uh, you know it's it's more or less the, the same. The, the flavor profile hasn't changed up much. Um, the body's picked up a little bit. It's more along the lines of medium to full at this point. Not quite full, but uh, it, it's getting there. Finish is is pretty smooth. I'm getting a creamy texture on the palate. <clears throat> it's sort of a sort of a filmy kind of texture. Um, a flavor profile. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is is still? It's got a, a bitter chocolate component to it that's very nice. Uh, I'm still getting a little bit of a coffee flavor, but again, yeah, I can't, I can't really distinguish whether it's coming from the actual coffee that I'm drinking or if it's coming from the cigar. And um, at the core of it all, it, it just tastes like uh, like Nicaraguan tobacco. It's got that little bit of a zing to it. That's sort of a almost like a spicy or zingy component. Uh, the spice is more prominent through the sinus. And all in all, I, you know, I, I enjoyed it. It's becoming a little bitter at this point as the as the cigar begins to burn down. And I don't know that I would necessarily mind the bitterness later on in the day, but since it's still fairly early, it, it's, I don't know, it, it just kind of hit me the wrong way. Um, I generally smoke these late afternoon, more toward the night. And uh, I, I, I sort of enjoy that bitterness. I like to to smoke these with something like uh, a Yingling Black and Tan or, or some other type of stout. They go well with uh, Lancaster Brewing Company Milk Stout, which I drink every now and again. Uh, the, the stout flavor really brings out the, the, the Maduro qualities in, in a lot of these Maduro cigars, and, and they, they really pair well together. 
uh, went well with the coffee, but it the coffee really didn't bring out the that, that sort of bitter chocolate flavor that I, that uh, that is apparent in the cigar. It didn't bring it out as much as I would have expected with something like a stout. Uh, probably because they're both they both have a, a sort of a creamy texture. They both have that that dark sort of flavor core to them. But uh, all in all, I enjoyed it. Um, burn rate is is excellent. I'm going on two and a half hours now. Uh, the uh, the burning characteristics are good. The, the burn line is fairly thin. It's it's a little wavy, but uh, it, it's well within reason. Uh, what I call within reason. If you take the highest point and the lowest point, if there's a variance of more than three eighths of an inch, that's borderline within reason. Anything more than that, you know, I don't. I get the sudden urge to grab the lighter and touch it up. Uh, in this case, it's it's getting there, but it's not quite bad enough for me to, to set flame to the wrapper to try to even everything out. Uh, the ash is fairly light in color. It's pretty strong. It's got a nice, firm, compacted shape to it. Uh, it takes a, a nice, firm tap over the ashtray to knock the ash off. I haven't had any flaking or flowering going on. It's been pretty neat. And, uh, you know, all in all, I don't remember exactly what these cost. Again, uh, I ran into my local Miami cigar rep, and he was kind enough to give me one as he was talking to the owner of the shop and I uh, just brought it home and, and lit it up. Uh, the last ones I bought were from uh, Atlantic Cigar and they were a little while ago. I think I bought a five pack or two and I, I went through them over the course of a couple of months. But uh, this is a Pepin product. It's it's along the lines of other Pepin products being that it's medium to full and it's got that spicy component because of the Nicaraguan tobacco and whatnot. Uh, from what I understand this is one of the very few Maduro wrap cigars that he did. I think at the time that we did this review with um, with Bob and Dale, that uh, it, it was probably the only product that Pepin made with a Maduro wrapper. Um, you know, Jerry just recently did a review of the uh, the Camaguan Maduro. That's a, a Pepin product, from what I understand. I'm not really familiar with a lot of uh, of P. Johnson stuff, but you know, that sports uh, Connecticut shade. Uh, just or not a Connecticut shade, a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, which Pete says is more or less Connecticut broadleaf. He doesn't distinguish Maduro or not because the the, the leaf's natural tendency is to be dark and to be depicted as a Maduro. So I, I'm guessing at this point, you know, Pepin does more than one Maduro, obviously with the the Camaguan Maduro. Um, you know, I, I, the. You know, I'm struggling to remember what I paid for the last one I got. And because I bought them in a five pack, they were a little less expensive than usual. Uh, the last one, the last single I bought wasn't uh, a, a Maduro. It was actually a Connecticut, and I think that ran me about seven bucks. So if this is in the five to seven range, I think it's it's a comfortable price point for it. I think it's worth the worth the money. If it gets up over seven dollars, I think it's a little a little pricey for what you're getting. But uh, all in all, I enjoyed it. Even the, the the bitterness, as a in as a first cigar of the day at this point, it's a little much, but uh, I, I really don't think I would mind it later on in the evening. I think that bitterness might complement uh, the cigar a little better because the flavors would seem a little more muted because you know my palate's adjusted. I've had several meals throughout the day, whether it be breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If I'm smoking this in the evening or or just breakfast and lunch, if I smoke it before dinner, something like that. But uh, again, I, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, definitely check out the original review, and actually, I think I pulled up the information on... Uh, no, I must have closed the window. Uh, if you head over to uh, dogwatchcigarradio.com, uh, dwcr.net, dogwatchsocialclub.com, uh, you can look through the previous shows that Bob and Dale did, and back in the early 100s, I think, I think it was between 100 and 110, Brian, Jerry, Brian Tipton, Jerry and I all did uh, a review of the the 601 Maduro with the guys on their show. And uh, if you want a little more information on the cigar, you can check that out. You can also check out the original review, which I will link below this video. So uh, that's what I've got for you. Hopefully I'll be able to find something in the cooler that I haven't reviewed yet, and I can do a full-blown review sooner than you know sooner than later but uh i'm definitely gonna have to get out and pick up some of the milder cigars that i can so that i can do a full-blown review earlier in the day and not blow out my palate on something that's overly full uh the next cigar i plan on reviewing <clears throat> is uh 
is probably going to be the Nesta Miranda Rookie. And I'll give you some more information on that cigar later on. It's, um, I think it's a, a particular shape of the special selection line made by Don Pepin. I think it's a Maduro wrapper, but it, from what the rep was telling me, it's, it's pretty full bodied. So I didn't want to go lighting that up first thing in the morning. I did want to smoke that and do a review on it, but again, it was a little too early for something so full bodied. But uh, anyway, that's all I got for you. So uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate some comments. And uh, until next week, happy smoking.